Hey everyone, how's it going? How you doing, Sup? Oh, doing all right so far. He gets it's a face. Oh, oh, where? What? Who? What? What happened? It's almost scary how much we match. We're like different contrast <laughs> of of white here. <laughs> it's it's kind of scary. Hey, Carrie, how's everybody doing? And uh, for those of you who celebrate, I personally don't. But happy Easter! I hope everyone's having a wonderful and safe holiday and not dying of uh, diabetes today. Top Doc, thank you very much for the uh, Twitch Prime sub. Yeah, the real abuse victim here. <laughs> 14 months. Ooh, that's Get up a, there. Yeah, no kidding. Uh, 10 month streak, though. Not bad. Oh, it is the wrong picture. Look at that. See, I'm always screwing something up. Always. Something's always getting screwed up. <laughs> that's just how it goes. He gets Twitch vaccine. That's the problem. <laughs> right? Oh, God. Hold on. Good God. Tried to make sure I had everything else ready. And of course, I screwed this up. God, Ikea. There we go. There we go. Look at that. Yay! It functions. <laughs> oh, you could put the thing S engine like the upper right corner where it's nice and blank. Oh, yeah, I could. <laughs> I'm going to hold off on that for now. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, I got it. Thank you very much, Mira. Oh, boy. Vaccines are child abuse. Good God. What have I started here? Anyways, uh, moving moving along, please. Uh, hey, and good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to What Do We Know, a podcast dedicated to education through discussion and also apparently uh, screwing up the podcast in general. I'd like to thank everyone for joining us today as we look at the unpleasant reality of child abuse. Looking at you, Top Dog. Everyone should be against it, but do you understand what falls under the umbrella of abuse? Do you know how to spot it? And most importantly, do you know what you could or should do about it? And yes... I do mean legally, we do not want anyone trying to get arrested or get in trouble out there or do something absolutely crazy. So we're going to move on to Top so he can tell us what we know. Well, there's a lot of sides of child abuse, and uh, we're going to start off with child abuse itself, or child maltreatment as it's sometimes referred to, and that is the physical, sexual, or psychological maltreatment or neglect of, ch of a child or children, especially by a parent or a caregiver. Child abuse can include... Any act of failure to act by a parent or caregiver that results in actual or potential harm to a child and can occur in a child's home, in the organizations, schools, or communities the child interacts with. The terms child abuse and child maltreatment are often used interchangeably, although some researchers make a distinction between them, treating child maltreatment as an umbrella term that covers neglect, exploitation, trafficking, abandonment, kind of everything all in one. The World Health Organization, WHO, uh, defines child abuse and maltreatment as all forms of physical and or emotional ill treatment, sexual abuse, neglect, or negligent treatment, or commercial or other exploitation um, resulting in actual or potential harm to the child's health, survival, development, or dignity in the context of a relationship of responsibility, trust, or power. Whew, that was a long quote. <laughs> In the United States, the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, the CDC, uses the term child maltreatment to refer to both acts of commission, which are active abuse, which includes words or overt actions that cause harm, potential harm, or threat of harm to a child, and also acts of omission, which would be more than the neglect side, meaning the failure to provide for a child's basic physical, emotional, or educational needs, or to protect a child from harm or potential harm. It's a pretty big umbrella. It's a huge umbrella. Now, reading over that, what would you infer from that? Like, could you give some examples? Well, there's a lot of stuff that, that really strikes me from both of those um, that are very modern to the definition, particularly with the child abuse from the World Health Organization, because it also includes commercial or other exploitation, because child actors went through hell in the 80s. Yes. A lot of kids in our show business did not grow up normal, and I think we can all pretty much point out five or ten examples off the top of our head. And Miley Cyrus, there's... what? <laughs> and she's probably one of the milder ones. Yes. Uh, Hillary um, Duff, I think, was another good example of that. Huge or the, the Corys yeah. from those, all those 80s movies. I, yeah. mean, I think one of them ended up committing suicide or overdosing or something just yeah. to handle all the stuff he went through. Um, Which makes me sad as a fellow Cory. I just want to say. That makes me sad. <laughs> yeah, there you go. And then uh, what was the other one I saw in here? Uh, educational needs from the CDC. You, it, there are several school districts now that if your child misses too much school, that falls under this the is, umbrella. Hold, hold on. Ikea, this things. is white. This isn't green, so it shouldn't pick it up. It's just uh, the color correction issue going on there. 
I think it's just the way the light's hitting it. He's uh, radioactive is what he doesn't want to tell everyone. Yes. I can actually <laughs> see if I can uh, fix that. Go ahead. If you color correct the white too much, we'll both disappear. <laughs> uh, there we go. There we go. It's a little better. Oh, God, no. I need to... Uh, no. Oh. No. I got whiter. I don't know how the hell that happened. <laughs> I, I did lose to 10, my God. Uh, anyways, moving on to the topic at hand here. Uh, child neglect is a form of child abuse and is a, a deficit in meeting a child's basic needs, including the failure to provide adequate health care, supervision, clothing, nutrition, housing, as well as their physical, emotional, social, and educational safety needs. A good example of someone who's gone through this would probably be uh, Ikea here in chat. If you've ever seen him talk, heard him talk, or watched him play a video game, uh, you would know that this is probably pretty accurate. Uh, now, society generally believes that there are necessary behaviors a caregiver must provide in order for a child to develop physically, socially, and emotionally. Causes of neglect may result from several parenting problems, including mental disorders, substance abuse, domestic violence, unemployment, unplanned pregnancy, and poverty. Now, child neglect depends on how a child in society perceives a parent's behavior. It is not how parents believe they are behaving towards their child. Parental failure to provide for a child when options are available is different from failure to provide when options are not available. Poverty and lack of resources are often contributing factors and can prevent parents from meeting their ch children's needs when they otherwise would. The circumstances and intentionality must be examined before defining behavior as neglectful. Also, I am Ron Burgundy and read everything. <laughs> Sorry, I couldn't help but toss one in there trying to keep it light on this topic. <laughs> 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 I read it and I was like, I have to read it. I have to. <laughs> Once you get halfway through, you kind of have to finish. <laughs> <laughs> You're welcome, Ikea. <laughs> oh man, child neglect is the most whoa Oops, sorry is the most just... frequent form of child abuse with children born to young mothers at a substantial risk for neglect. In 2008, the U.S. State and Local Child Protective Services, also known as CPS, received 3.3 million reports of children being abused and neglected. 3.3 million. 71% of the children were classified as victims of child neglect. Maltreated children were about five times more likely to have a first emergency department uh, presentation for suicide related behavior uh, compared to their peers in both boys and girls. Children permanently removed from their parental home because of substantial child abuse are also at an increased risk of a uh, first presentation to the emergency department for suicide related behavior. Neglected children are at risk of developing lifelong social, emotional, and health problems, particularly if neglected before the age of two years, which is just sad. And we're seeing a lot more in the yeah. news as like social media is becoming obviously substantially prominent today. Um, the things that go on, the depraved activities are just insane. And there's a dog walking behind me. Oh, well, and also the, oh, the oh, ability God. of children to be able to communicate with people is expanding because if you have access oh. to any kind of electronic device, oh, you can left. tweet somebody, you can right. text, them, you can sometimes just take a picture of something and help. Help is more readily available because communication is harder to stop. In the past, you lock a kid in a room and they're just stuck. They can't get help. But, you know, these days there's a lot of different ways to spread information. I feel like you're looking at clones. <laughs> <laughs> I'm the prettier one. Oh, no, it's fine. I was actually trying to get Mocha's attention so she'd pop up here. Take, Mocha. Hey, the, the dogs outnumber the people in this podcast now. I'm good. Yeah, seriously. I'm not Mocha. alone. Mocha. All right, so going further into child abandonment, that is the practice oh, of relinquishing one. interest and claims over one's offspring in an extra-legal way with the intent of never again resuming or reasserting guardianship over them. This is uh, Moxie. Oh, no. Sorry. <laughs> Hi, Mox. I have a Mox. Mocha. Mocha. Come on. Mocha. Come here. Nobody ever sees the pups. We see cat. Hi. Yeah, there's the other one. Hey, Mocha. Okay. We'll be back <laughs> somewhere else. <laughs> and I, as a small side note, having worked retail for many years, I do not understand how when Mexican people drop off their kids in a store, leave, and come back hours later, I do not understand how more are not arrested for child abandonment. Other than stores being pansies, not wanting to call the cops. Because, right? Oh my God, that's a legitimate, serious problem it that is. a lot of people do. I apologize for the interruptions. I'm I'm trying no, to keep good. things light today. Obviously, this is a pretty hard hitting topic. Uh, again, IKEA. 
Um, <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Love you, Ikea. Yeah, I'll bob up and down a lot because my laptop is mobile. Whee! I think they're talking about your swimming. Oh, well, yeah. Maybe. Oh, well, my. somebody commented on your swimming. Ikea said so one of them knows how to swim better than the other when you're talking about dogs. Hey, I can hit Key West in a good 45 minutes. Just put me in a body of water. <laughs> <laughs> so back to child abandonment. So typically the phrase <laughs> describe the physical abandoning of a child, but can also include severe cases of neglect and emotional abandonment, not just physical, uh, such as in the case of a parent who fails to offer financial and emotional support for his or her child over a long period of time. An abandoned child is referred to as a foundling as opposed to a runaway orphan. You also have another version of child abandonment, which is baby dumping, and that refers to parents leaving a child younger than 12 months in a public or private place with the intent of terminating their care for the child. It, it can be home as, known as rehoming in some areas, uh, in a case where adoptive parents use illegal means like the internet to find a new home for the child. Uh, several countries, particularly India, are infamous for selling their children to make ends meet. Uh, and they do not end in good places. Uh, one of the things my church does in one of their ministries is they use donations to go get these children. They buy one out of slavery and use that child and their information to go back in and free the rest of them. Uh, it's a massive problem in India, and it's not necessarily something that people here don't do. They're just a little more quiet about it. Coy about it. Yeah, more quiet about it, a little more underhanded, not as. Uh, Blatant. I don't know if they deal with less abuse, but it's like it, it, more black market controly than just publicly who gives a shit in India. Right. Uh, let's see here. In most cases, child abandonment is classified under a subsection of child abuse statutes and is punishable with a felony. Uh, following felon felonious charges, sure. one or both guardians give up the parental rights of the child and sever the relationship with the child. Some states do allow for reinstatement of parental rights, in which case the parent or parents can have a relationship with the child again but it is unlikely that parents can ever regain custody. And the perpetrator can additionally be charged with reckless abandonment if the victim, victim dies as a result of his or her actions of neglect. And then uh, there's also corporal punishment or physical punishment, which is a punishment intended to cause physical pain on a person. It is most often practiced on minors, especially in home and school settings, and common methods are usually spanking or paddling. And we're going to dive into that a little bit more because it's a, bit of a gray area when it comes to it i mean some people grow up loving that shit i'm just saying uh <laughs> yeah. speaking of my wife said there's a famous picture of kids for sale during the great depression i do remember seeing that it yeah. was it's it's disheartening yeah. to see but i mean i mean it, it's hard to kind of judge during times like that sometimes it it is a little hard to judge i think when when you are in that much despair in some of those areas and you were literally, it's, yeah, it's hard to judge when you're not in that specific moment, right. but anyone who has had kids, it's really what it should take for you to get there. You should be willing to do literally anything else. And short of the depression, which a lot of people weren't prepared for and never assumed could happen. I don't see in modern times how the U S could ever get back to that point, but other parts of the world definitely are still hitting that point. Okay. So apparently it wasn't necessarily during, uh, the great depression. She corrected herself. Not technically. I'm seeing if the actual picture 48, just have to is report. here. Yeah. Uh, the, further, uh, there, the photo that uh, we're talking about first appeared in the uh, Vedette Messenger of Valparaiso, Indiana, on in August 5th, 1948. The children look po posed and a bit confused as their pregnant mother hides her face from the photographer. The caption read, A big for sale sign in the Chicago yard. It mutely tells a tragic story of Mr. and Mrs. Ray uh, Chalifo. Uh, who face eviction from their apartment with no place to turn. The jobless coal truck driver and his wife decide to sell their four children. Mrs. Lucille Chalifo turns her head from camera above while her children stare wonderingly. On the top steps are Lana, six, Ray, five, below are Milton, four, and Sue Ellen, two. And I'm trying to see if this actual picture is shown here, which doesn't look like it actually is. Well, that's helpful. Anyways, uh, so yeah, I mean... It's, I, I didn't see it there. I mean, there was, is, is that the picture? There was no for sale sign on it. Oh, there was a picture in that article, very top. Yeah, uh, it didn't show for me. Maybe the link didn't work. Let me, let me, let me try again. Let me try. It's the very top of the article. Oh, yeah, it's not loading up right for me. That would be why. Uh-huh. Ah. Uh, come on. 
I, I hope you're dressed. Help him with the internet. There we go. Since it's not loading up properly on mine, uh, let's see. This technological marvel is holding go. up another computer to his camera. I, well, yeah, I know because the website. We're we're special here. Uh, <laughs> see, this is why I actually want to get like a monitor where I can just sit here and pop things up and do all this other stuff. Uh, yeah, this browser has been giving me issues. Um, so anyways, yeah, there's definitely been times where, uh, you see things like that. And I guess, uh, depending on where you at, where you're at, um, it can seem like the right thing to do at the time. So like we said, it's a little hard to judge on that special gas Ikea. Anyways, moving on. Speaking of special, the world health organization distinguishes four types of child maltreatment, physical abuse, sexual abuse, emotional and psychological abuse, and neglect. Now, physical abuse uh, among professionals and the general public is uh, there's not really a huge agreement on what behaviors constitute physical abuse of a child. Physical abuse often does not occur in isolation, um, but as part of a constellation of behaviors, including uh, uh, authoritarian control. Good God, I'm having trouble with words again. <laughs> Anxiety provoking behavior and lack of parental warmth. Um, you also get that in some marriages, by the way. The WHO defines physical abuse as, quote, intentional use of physical force against a child that results in or has a high likelihood of resulting in harm for the child's health, survival, development, or dignity. This includes hitting, beating, kicking, shaking, biting, strangling, scalding, burning, poisoning, and suffocating. Much physical violence against children in the home is inflicted with the object of punishing, end quote. Most physical abuse is physical punishment in intent, form, and effect. Overlapping definitions of physical abuse and physical punishment of children highlight a subtle or non-existent distinction between abuse and punishment. Yeah, that's Ikea, where it gets tricky. Ikea said, meh, I was hit and I'm kind of able to function. That's debatable. I don't know if we want to use him as the, the poster child for, for this. <laughs> But uh, so physical or corporal punishment by a parent or other guardian is any act causing deliberate physical pain or discomfort to a minor child in response to some undesired behavior. It typically takes the form of spanking or slapping the child with an open hand or striking with an implement such as a belt, slipper, or cane. A uh, hairbrush or paddle can also include shaking, pinching, forced ingestion of substances, for example, washing it with soap, or forcing children to stay in uncomfortable positions. Corporal punishment in the home, punishment of children or teenagers by parents or other adult guardians, is legal in most of the world. 58 countries, most of them in Europe and Latin America, have banned the practice as of 2015. Social acceptance of corporal punishment is high in countries where it's lawful, particularly among more traditional groups. In many cultures, parents have historically been regarded as having the right, if not the duty, to physically punish misbehaving children in order to teach appropriate behavior. Researchers, on the other hand, point out that corporal punishment typically has the opposite effect, leading to more aggressive behavior in children and less long-term obedience. Now, Worked I want to take a me. little pause here for some debate, because the tricky thing is there is a very fine, fine line between a punishment that will stick and get the child to understand, okay, you have crossed the line, and no, this is not happening again. Right. And actually abusing the shit out of your kid. My wife's dad kind of had the, the best way of putting it. It's like, he he absolutely spanked her, but he would never use anything other than an open palm. Because if it stung his hand, he knew roughly what the child was feeling. If you're hitting him with a belt or a spoon handle or a cast iron you transformer. You can't gauge how hard any you're hitting. Things, you can very easily lose your temper and just not realize you're doing some significant damage. If your hand is stinging and an hour later it's still stinging, you know, okay, that, check on them, see if they're all right. They have to understand when they cross a line. Usually in my house, I do spank Isabella, but for the most part, when she crosses the stupid line into you would just put yourself in dangerous harm and you could have really hurt yourself. Mm -hmm. That's kind of where that comes in. So where if I'm going to spank, she was immediately cover ass run get away from whatever she's doing the other tooth came out cool what wonderful timing <laughs> my kid literally comes over with a bloody mouth no my teeth fell out it's like oh my god please that's a pattern <laughs> <all times. laughs> speaking so, of which that's how i handle my wife too i mean you, sometimes you just gotta <laughs> you know you gotta do your thing speaking yeah, of like uncomfortable when... positions would school technically be uh classified as abuse i mean let me tell you it was uncomfortable well, for me <laughs> here, here's the thing with school um 
in public schools have one domain, but private schools, you do not have your typical citizen rights in private schools. Part of the contract is you sign away your rights and you give the school authority basically to beat your children. He missed the Nuns joke will there. Take... But I'm glad we're actually discussing well, this. Yeah. yeah. But, you know, none, nuns in the convent for the school went for uh, elementary Rulers school, were popular. They would take metal rulers and whack your knuckles. Oh, yeah. Uh, my high school math teacher, algebra teacher, was the football coach. He carried a drumstick, a pair of drumsticks under his arm as he was checking homework. Didn't do your homework. You had the choice. Either do it right then and finish it before he goes around or you take two licks of the drumstick. He had a drawer full of D-cell batteries that he would send you back to the thermostat and chuck them. And you, if you were able to miss all the ones he threw, you could sit back down. But if you got hit, then you stood up there until you felt like throwing more. So it, it definitely is a big thing in private schools to this day, especially the religiously one runs. At least they weren't They're, energizer batteries. They just keep going and going. And well, going. Some of them have the paddles with the air holes. They whistle through the air and they will and they, paddle you. Oh, in they the sting of class. worse with the holes. Oh, they hurt. Ooh. They hurt a lot. So, I mean, schools definitely do do that, and there's not really a law that can protect you because part of the contract, the parent is giving authority for the schools to punish them as, you know, legally as a parent. So, it, it, <laughs> it's a gray area. But, I mean, I do see it work. Yeah. You know, I don't – while they say that it has the opposite effect, I think that's probably in the cases where parents aren't paying enough attention. And, like, to this day, if my dad adjusts his belt, I flinch. That dude was See you later, no man. joke with a belt. He actually had some uh, one, like, maybe 25-inch belts that he had cut off with a knife. Mm -hmm. All he had, had was a belt buckle for him to grab and the, the cut end for him to whip me with, and that hurt. That was some serious pain. Probably was abuse, but I damn well knew, don't fuck with Dad. He will whoop your ass. And usually the kids that get it quick, they probably don't fall under the abuse line because they get that hit, and they're like, okay, I get the point. There are some kids that don't get it, and then that's where I, was I can see that it escalates, and then maybe you're straddling that line of abuse or not, and maybe you have to keep in mind of, all right, clearly this isn't working. The signals are getting through. What else can we try? Because, you know, you don't want to be sitting there wondering, did, 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 is he still breathing? You know, <laughs> type yeah. of stuff. Speaking of other stuff, other adverse effects such as depression, anxiety, antisocial behavior, and increased risk of physical abuse have also been linked to the use of corporal punishment by parents. Uh, I might be a decent example of that. Uh, anxiety and some antisocial behavior. Not, not entirely. I like socializing, but I hate large groups, stuff like that. Um, evidence shows that spanking and other physical punishments, while uh, n you know nominally for the purpose of ch child discipline, are inconsistently applied often being used when parents are angry or under stress. Yes. That, that's the big thing. It, 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 there's yeah. a difference between doing it as a way to discipline and say, look, you did something really bad. This is the punishment versus you did something I don't like yeah. and I'm angry about it's, it and now I'm going to take it out on you. It's uh, critical to take time to calm down before applying a physical punishment. Don't do it mad because you will absolutely lose control. Maybe I am a murderer and you just don't know. Um, <laughs> <laughs> severe forms of corporal punishment include uh, kicking, biting, scalding, and burning can also constitute unlawful uh, child abuse. Can? I think they should. <laughs> uh, most nations with child abuse laws deem the deliberate infliction of serious injuries or actions that place a child at obvious risk or serious injury or death to be illegal. Bruises, scratches, burns, broken bones, lacerations, as well as repeated mishaps, a.k.a. I fell down the stairs repeatedly, uh, and rough treatment uh, that could cause physical injuries can be physical abuse. Multiple injuries or fractures at different stages of healing can raise suspicion of abuse. So a lot of times that I've noticed, um, uh, Ikea said he knows, he knows a murderer. All right. Uh, Dumbo, in my secondary <laughs> school, the default was holding a weighted oh, retort. You. Uh, stand at arm's length, basically a stress position uh, for your arm. Quite enough. Yeah, I had to do that in the military. We had to uh, hold the uh, the uh, M16. We had to sit there and hold it out mm -hmm. like this, and you had to hold it as long as possible. And if you didn't, then yeah, you got punished for that. Um, they lock themselves in the guest room. That's fantastic. Thank you for that. Uh, yeah, exactly. Ike, I fell down the stairs because Dad pushed me. A lot of times um, when it comes to issues like that, if you ever have to go to the hospital and some parents will bring their kids to the hospital, get them treated and be like, oh, they fell down the stairs or they fell off their bike. 
or anything, doctors are able to a lot of times tell potentially how those injuries could have occurred. You know, right. some things just don't line up with falling off your bike or something like that. Yeah, or if you every third Wednesday of the month you keep coming in with different magical injuries, then right? Really exactly. Concerned about okay, what are you really doing at home? Yeah. Um, now, most nations with child abuse laws deem. Uh, nope, nope, nope. Moving on. Stroke. Really, yeah. Uh, the psychologist Alice Miller, noted for her books on child abuse, took the view that humiliations, spankings, and beatings, slaps in the face, etc., are all forms of abuse because they injure the integrity and dignity of a child, even if the con consequences are not visible right away. And I can agree with that because a lot of that, say you're to humiliate your child in front of uh, you know their classmates or something like that, you're making them a target. Because let's face it, kids are assholes. Kids are 100% mm. assholes, and if they have any ammunition to use against you, um, yeah, they're, they're going to definitely use that. And that can start forming antisocial behavior, anxiety, depression. Um, they may, a uh, good chance of them being more at risk for physical abuse, performing that against other kids or later on down the road. Um, often physical abuse as a child can lead to physical and mental difficulties in the future, including re-victimization, like I was just saying, personality disorders, post-traumatic stress disorder, PTSD, uh, disassociative disorders, depression, anxiety, suicidal ideation, eating disorders, substance abuse, and uh, aggression. Now, physical abuse in childhood has also been linked to homelessness in adulthood. Uh, if you think about it, some people may be like, well, how is that related? Well, if you combine all these issues, they are no longer able to function properly, hold down a job, uh, maintain a family or anything else like that. They drive people away. They lose friends if they even have any at that point. And then they get to a point where they have nowhere else to go. They have nothing. They've literally run themselves into the ground uh, due to things like that. Now, um, discussing all this, uh, if anybody does want to talk about it, feel free. Uh, anybody who got beat as a kid, uh, do you know with what you were beat? Did it work? Uh, do you do differently? Did you learn from what happened from that? Uh, do you view it as a punishment? Do you abuse it as abuse? Yeah, it kind of runs the gamut. I mean, it, a lot of people do the same thing their parents did. A lot of people try their hardest not to be their parents. And it's, there's no definitive lie it seems where people go with it or don't go with it sometimes it's just my wife because that's the way it was my wife made another little comment here three month old who quote fell off the bed and everything's broken come on yeah it's are bouncy they don't remember they don't break everything just from a little tumble off a bed <laughs> think i am glad the doctors are mandated reporters because there's a lot of times where people will finally seek some help to fix a symptom and not realize that they need to say hey my All husband's right. a drunk beating the kids or my wife threw this kid into a, a, a wood chipper and I just paper saved it or something, you know? Yeah. Uh, people are very, they're ashamed to mention their family has problems, but they're not, they're, they're too proud to ask for help. It seems like, I'm not sure if I'm stating that right, but I don't understand the mindset of someone who knows abuse is going on. But they can't bring themselves to, to mention it because other people might think something badly about them. It's like, Right. Get help. If you need help, get help. Now, normally, speaking of help, uh, I think Gold was supposed to be here with us. I'm not even sure if she's on top, if you want to check. But if anybody, if you don't want to bring up anything that happened to you as a kid here, um, I do know that Gold, Golden Pants, if you're familiar with her, she's usually in a lot of my streams. Um, she is actually a uh, a therapist. Uh, so if you need someone to talk to or something like that, I'm sure she'd be glad to, uh, figure something out, help you out there. Um, I know she covers a, a pretty wide, uh, range of things that she can discuss or do. Uh, are you messaging her? See if she's around. Yeah, I shot her a quick message. All right. I wasn't sure if she was uh, raining or if she was just derping around and forgot what day it was. Uh, wife says, sometimes we are wrong. Like some people find out their kids have a brittle bone syndrome. Yeah. Uh, osteogenesis imperfecta, uh, but I'd rather put that kid's family through a little hell rather than miss a kid who is really being abused, which is a I, rather say than sorry approach, you know, and it's definitely, I'd rather be the asshole who thought maybe your kid was getting beaten than be the asshole who completely missed it because, oh, it couldn't possibly be this. Um, yeah, I mean, it, this, for the most part, uh, uh, CPS is what does in Texas. 
they're nor they're actually pretty sensible about how they approach these. It's not knee jerk, take away kids, oh my god, reaction. Um, uh, my uh daughter Whitney, which she met when she was here, her her right. daughter, my 13 year old granddaughter, when she was younger, like around nine or ten, um, she was not paying attention and she stepped on a hair curler that was on the ground because but something was going on, some party or something, and a bunch of people were doing their hair, and someone set their hair curler down and she stepped on it and burned her foot. And uh, when she was at school, she was changing her shoes and pee or something. Someone saw the burns mm-hmm. under there, and the school reported that as potential abuse because that is a legitimate tactic some people use. They burn the bottoms of the kids' feet so that they can't be seen, that the injury right. can't be seen, but they're able to still do that to their children. I was like, holy shit, people actually do that? Oh, people and are terrible. Obviously, from the reactions of the parents, the, the CPS knew that they had no idea that this was a thing that would happen or they would have sent them to the school, so that it got dismissed pretty quickly. But mm-hmm. it's better for people to notice those things, and it gives me comfort that people are paying enough attention to notice those things, because while that instance wasn't really abuse, someone else might have something going on. If no one's looking, no one's caring, that's when bad things happen. I mean, not paying enough attention to children and I use this all the way through high school because, sorry, until you're in college and kind of get some adult experience, you're a fucking child. Um, not paying enough attention to, ch- to children is where a lot of the school shooting problems come from. Uh, abuse can manifest itself in many different ways. And if children aren't being taken care of in the home, either emotionally, mentally, whatever, they act out in all sorts of different ways. And we right. have major problems of bullying, getting out of control, cyber you know, mass shootings, mass stabbings, fighting in schools. There's a lot of schools where they're just known for after school, but they go to the park and they fight all the time. Kids are getting arrested in their freshman and sophomore years for constantly fighting. Yeah. And then we have the alternative school problems and they get into that loop and juvie and all that mess. So I'd also like to point out, it's, it's good to pay attention in general, even beyond being a child. I just want to add to that. It's always, uh, I think a lot of people have gotten to this mindset. Well, if I'm in my own business, I don't have to worry about it or anything else. Oh, I shouldn't get involved. But and the reality is we all need to kind of take that step to, care about everybody around this stranger or not if we see somebody who could potentially be in danger you know it's our responsibility as a society to try and look out for others so you know keep that in mind don't be afraid to say something the worst that's going to happen is oh you're wrong but i mean most people i mean they may be upset initially if it is you know the wrong interpretation but then they're probably gonna you know like top said be appreciative that somebody cares enough to be like hey we at have to be a village, of, exactly. Yeah. At the risk of violating Godwin's law, post-World War II, there is no longer a pass of, oh, I want to mind my own business. When six million people are eradicated off the face of the earth because nobody wanted to get involved, as a whole, humanity has lost the ability to say, eh, never mind, someone else will take care of it. Right. Shit like that only is even remotely possible because people live want to live in their own bubble and not worry about anything. Else. Right. Well, no, you can't care about everyone. You can give a basic human shit about what's going on in general around you. And if you see something, question it. I mean, it's free to question something. The worst you're going to be told is, oh, this is because of this. Don't worry. And at least you know. But if you're just like, eh, it's fine. Eh, it's fine. Well, then yeah. you're going to, eh, it's fine until it happens to you. And they're like, why did no one do anything prior to this? Well, come on. Yeah, you kind of lose that right to be upset if nobody cares about you, if you don't care about somebody else. Uh, anyways. All right, so the next part we're going to get to here is sexual abuse. And uh, in a lot of these next few sections, we're going to have some discussion after the fact, because uh, there's a lot of good, meaty stuff before we get into um, some of the effects while we're just going over the types of abuse here. And, and sexual abuse is a pretty big one. Um, we have child sex abuse, the nickname is CSA. Uh, it's a form of child abuse in which an adult or an older adolescent abuses a child for sexual stimulation. Sex abuse refers to the participation of a child in a sexual act aimed towards the physical gratification or the financial profit of the person committing the act. Very important addition they made to that. Uh, forms of CSA include asking or pressuring a child to engage in sexual activities regardless of the outcome, indecent exposure of the genitals to a child, displaying pornography, por- por- <laughs> stroke of all the words I should be able to pronounce. Jesus. <laughs> pornography. Right. Yeah. Displaying pornography to a child, actual sexual contact with a child, 
physical contact with the child's genitals, viewing of the child's genitalia without physical contact, or using a child to produce child pornography. The selling of sexual services of children can be viewed as, and treated as child abuse rather than simply incarceration. That sentence makes no sense. I, I'm guessing because child abuse may um, may hold a higher uh, punishment versus, uh, yeah, the sentence. I guess they mean sense. it's child abuse rather than child than uh, false arrest or false imprisonment. Right. It's probably- there. Then the effects of child sexual abuse on the victims include guilt and self-blame, which is extremely common, flashbacks, nightmares, insomnia, fear of things associated with the abuse, including objects, smells, places, doctor physics, etc., self-esteem difficulties, sexual dysfunction, chronic pain, addiction, self-injury, suicidal ide- uh, ideation. Ide- ideation. Ideation. I'm not sure what that word means. Thinking uh, like suicidal thoughts. Oh, okay. I need to bring out my thesaurus, apparently. Uh, Somatic complaints, depression, post-traumatic stress disorder, anxiety, other mental illnesses, including borderline personality disorder and disassociative identity disorder, propensity to uh, to re-victimization in adulthood, bulimia nervosa, and physical injury to the child, among other problems. It's a lot of issues. A lot Mm -hmm. of issues because of dirtbags. Let's face it, they're dirtbags at that point. They're just POSs, 100%. No way around it. Uh, now, children who are the victims are also at an increased risk of sexually transmitted infections due to their uh, immature immune systems and a high potential for mucosal tears during forced sexual contact. Sexual victimization at a young age has been correlated with sev- several risk factors for contracting HIV, including decreased knowledge of sexual topics, increased prevalence of HIV, Engagement in risky sexual practices, condom avoidance, lower knowledge of safe sex practices, frequent changing of sexual partners, and more years of sexual activity. In the United States, approximately 15 to 25 percent of women and 5 to 15 percent of men were sexually abused when they were children. Most sexual abuse offenders are acquainted with their victims, so usually family, friends, or uh, you know, friends of the family. Approximately 30% are relatives of the child, most often brothers, sisters, fathers, mothers, uncles, or cousins. Around 60% are other acquaintances, such as friends of the family, like I said, babysitters, or neighbors. Strangers are the offenders in approximately 10% of child sexual abuse cases. And over one-third of cases, the perpetrator is also a minor. So... Yeah, it, it brings up a lot of different questions here. And yes. one thing people do forget is when you're coming to child sexual abuse, you're not just talking the the blatant trope of, okay, 40-year-old guy, 5-year-old kid. That's what comes to mind, but a lot of it is preteens that are experimenting, mm-hmm. kids playing doctor. So it's like, where where does the gray area end and where does abuse begin? When is it not okay? It's a question I don't even know that I can answer because, I mean, some kids will play doctor. That's just what kids do. They don't know what the fuck they're doing. Um, young teens that kind of think they know what they're doing but have no actual idea. You know, 12-year-olds, 13-year-olds are actively engaging in sex these days. There's a big, giant question mark in a lot of school districts is where they really start sexual education. Most of them, in my opinion, probably start too late. If you're starting, it should it, start at home. Well, in my opinion, it should. But I don't know how some of these people even manage to breed in the first place. Much less, how can they teach a child anything? But yeah. there's this. It seems to me that there's this fear of discussing anything with a kid, and by the time they're basically sexually active, they're not gonna listen to you. So. You almost have to bring this up somewhere in elementary before high school, but I don't know that a lot of schools really tackle it or do it in much depth. And in many cases, they're actually banned from discussing certain things. Like there Which was is a, ridiculous. A, there was a great thing I saw in Imgur where uh, a health um, teacher in a high school, they were legally banned from discussing any genitalia, any sexual object, be it con or anything else. So he had to use uh, a, you know, his foot in a sock to kind of analogize the proper way to use a certain thing that he couldn't mention. Jeez. You know, they couldn't even use a banana because that would be a phallic object. It's like, it's nuts. It's like, you, you can't can sit I here. Can I point and... out, can I point mm-hmm. out for a lot of this, 
it is religious based in a way. Somewhat. It there, can there's be. been a lot of there's been a lot of controversial discussion about condoms in the Catholic Church in particular. And I for a long time have been really fucking just hey, are you shitting me with papal edicts in the past, especially concerning Africa, where they have told people you know, they're, they're trying to go to Africa, they're trying to convert all these people to, to Catholicism or Christianity as a whole, and they're telling them, but don't use condoms, it's a sin. It's like, you're fucking kidding me. You've got the AIDS rampage of the world going on down there, and you're telling these people not to use prophylactics? Are you nuts? And only recently has the church finally come out and said, okay, it is not sinful to use a condom to prevent death, only if you're trying to prevent life. It's like, okay, that's one of the stupidest statements I've ever heard because literally the same act does both. You're potentially starting a life by having sex, but you're also preventing yourself from dying if you use a condom when you have sex. I, I don't understand the mental block they have with this. They need to just tell people condoms are okay. Abstinence does not work. Twisted apparently has disappeared. <laughs> He's abstaining from the webcam. That's I'm working. here. I'm here. Hold on. But uh, you can preach abstinence all you want. A horny teenager is going to be a horny teenager. You have to tell these people how to safely conduct the activities that you're not going to stop. And then maybe in, throw in some abstinence as well or something. But I don't get why. Well, when, when I was talking about still the, sick of those guys. The, the religious thing is because you get a lot of these parents who are like, why are you teaching you know, my kid things like this because, you know, we teach abstinence and all this other stuff. And you start, you know, really getting pushy into the the politics, I guess, of schools and everything else. They start really harping on that and making issues and, you know, creating waves. I know that's an issue. And then there's also the parents that are like, well, I should be discussing with that with my child, not you and all this other crap. So, I well, mean, but here here's the thing. If you're doing a shit job and the school mentions some stuff that you didn't cover, then your kids got the basics if you did a great job and the school doesn't mention enough then great kudos to you stepped up as a parent in what way would the school giving them information that's useful to prevent them from really screwing up their life before they understand the ramifications of their actions that would be bad it, the only thing that, that discussing sexual education in schools is doing that bothers most of these wonderful parents is the fact that your precious sheltered kid has to learn about sex and you didn't have a way of delaying it. And right. I'm sorry, you're an idiot. Kids need to know about sex from an early age. That way, when they're starting to get questioning about their sexuality, when they're deciding on partners, when they're trying to figure things out and they do not in any way, shape or form know what the fuck they're doing, they at least have some of the basics down. Right. And I'm sorry if you have to answer some uncomfortable questions. Maybe if we weren't such a sheltered moron, you could have covered some of this yourself. Yeah. But you got parents out there that just do not – they do not care how the world works. They want the world to work the way they want to work it. And I'm sorry, the world does not care what you want. The world is the way the world is, and you're living in it. Mm -hmm. And you're doing a disservice to your kids if you're not preparing them or allowing someone else to prepare them. Agreed. Yeah, it's nuts. It really is. It really is. I mean, it, it's important for children to understand what's wrong, what's okay, and if they do decide to do these things, because let's face it, kids are going to do shit whether we want them to as parents or not or anything else. Like, we can all vouch because we were there. Yeah. I mean, we were there. Well, and, you know, having gone to private school, Catholic school in particular, I can tell you the the more sheltered you force your kids to be, the more promiscuous they're going to be when they finally break loose. I mean, preachers' kids, high high religious households, those Ooh, kids yeah. rebel in a massive way, and you would it it is better for me to have a say in. All right, I want to at least know how much she's aware of or he's aware of before he starts going out. Because if you got a guy that's going out screwing every chick he can find, then you're looking at potential child support. You're looking at potential custody battles. You're looking at all sorts of crazy stuff. You've got a girl that's going out there to sleep with every guy that's going to be nice to her or say the right thing to her. You're looking at multiple kids. You're looking at you know having kids while you're in STDs, school. STDs, you know. Yeah. All either that. way, it's a hard path. Girls unfortunately have it harder than guys because guys can hit it and quit it, and you can't necessarily force them to pay child support. You can kind of go after some stuff, but it's it's a long, rough road. 
Mm-hmm. A gold just woke up. She's got distracted on Conan. She's probably gonna hop in, in a little bit. Oh boy. All right, so now on to the next section. So we've got psychological abuse. And there are multiple definitions of child psychological abuse. So we're going to kind of through a few. Uh, 2013, the uh, APA, which is the American Psychiatric Association, added child psychological abuse to the DSM-5, which we've covered a few times on this podcast. It's a gigantic book of different disorders. And it described it as a non-accidental verbal or symbolic act by a child's parent or caregiver that result or have reasonable potential to result in significant psychological harm to the child. It's a, it's a fairly wide definition there because when you add potential hey gold, it's very <laughs> hey gold. different. And uh, in 1995, the APSAC defined it as sp- burning, terrorizing, isolating, exploiting, corrupting, denying emotional responsiveness or neglect, or a repeated pattern of a caregiver behavior or extreme incidents that convey to the children that they are worthless, flawed, unloved, unwanted, endangered, or only of value in meeting another's needs. So an example of this, if I can just throw this in, would be like if um, something Call happened. Call players? <laughs> oh, God, yeah. Um, say you were to fall, scrape your knee or something like that, but your parent was angry and they denied giving you a hug when you're crying as a child or something like that. That would be an example of denying emotional responsiveness. Or if you did something, walk it off, you pussy. Yeah. Yeah. Or like, oh, I'm sorry. You screwed up. I don't love you anymore. You know, so things like that, um, especially as a child, you have to remember as a child, uh, our psychological state, it, it is very much growing and, um, it's in a fragile state and everything that happens to us, you know, a lot of times is going to carry with mm-hmm. us. So that's where you're going to start dealing with issues where, you know, people mm-hmm. don't know how to interact with others. They don't know how to hold a stable relationship or anything else, because for them, you know, this is the norm, you know, so. Exactly. Walk in it off. The US, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Like you. <laughs> In the U.S., there are a lot of varying state laws on it, but most states do have laws against mental injury in some type of broad sense. Um, Some have defined it as a production of psychological and social defects in the growth of a child as a result of behavior like loud yelling, coarse attitude, inattention, harsh criticism, and the denigration of the child's personality. Other examples include name-calling, ridicule, uh, degradation and destruction of personal belongings, torture or killing of a pet, excessive criticism, inappropriate or excessive demands, withholding communication, and routine labeling or humiliation. Have food. Ah, food. Mm-hmm. Mm, garlic bread. And a lot, I'm going to throw this in too because a lot of people tend to do this. A lot of people are starting to <sighs> label not... Uh, people are trying to say that they're young children or transgender or questioning or they're trying to assign this to their children. There was some actress, I think I don't remember who, but someone came out and said their seven year old is transgender and she's okay with it. It's like they're seven. They don't even know what the hell this Mm -hmm. is. I I don't believe they can make that choice that young. I mean, it's up to you to try to raise your kid, but people are trying to frame not being okay with a kid saying this as abuse when it's like, I feel when they're that young, it's okay to question to find out if they really mean it or if they just heard something somewhere and thought it was cool and they don't actually understand right. what they're doing. Agreed. Man, I got chicken here. I got mozzarella sticks. <laughs> oh, Gold makes a good point there. Yeah. She said, mine was, oh, you're hurting. Well, let me tell you how I'm hurting, how it's worse than what you're going through, which you don't do that to kids. I mean, mm. you shouldn't really do it to adults. You know, deal with your own stuff yourself. Don't worry. Don't try to play the one-upsmanship game. I cannot stand that shit with adults. But with kids, you can't sit there with a younger kid and try to one-up them and make them feel like they're worthless over it. It's stupid. It, it's a little ridiculous. Uh, forgive me. I haven't eaten all day yet. Um, finally got a name said. I think kids can realize they're trans at a young age, but I don't think they should undergo hormonal treatment at a young age. Yeah, which is fine. I mean, you give them time to develop and, you know, see where things go. You don't want to necessarily stunt anything uh, emotionally, I guess. It, it may be one of those things where 
it, it's undefined well, here's the thing. It's 100%. Like, on a normal cycle of a kid growing up, if a kid comes to you out of the blue and is like, hey, I kind of feel this way, let's talk. I can see that happening. What I have a problem with, in particular, maybe this is unfair to celebrities, but celebrities, and I've always felt when you make above a certain amount of money, you tend to lose touch a little bit with reality. And with celebrities in, in particular, they've got the wealth issue and the fame issue where they find themselves outside of normal population and they enter their own echo chambers where they are the ones generating whatever their kids are consuming on social media. So how much of what your kid is telling you is your own ideas and views parroted back and how much is their own real thought? Right. So I, I question more so when celebrity kids do it than when normal kids do it. Cause if I'm in a house, I send my kid to school and then she comes back from school and we talk and we do things normally. And one day she comes up and says, Hey, I'm gay or Hey, I'm trans. Okay. Let's have a conversation. Do you know what this really means? Whereas I feel a lot of celebrities are like, Oh, you're trans. Oh, how cool. I have a trans daughter. Hey, everyone. And it's like, you never actually have a discussion with that person. You just right. go off of what they said. And did you really dive into what that means? Because they might not understand what that means outside of whatever they've heard you talking to about other things. And how do you know it's not them just saying, oh, mama's always talking about this stuff. I'm going to go ahead and say this because I want her to like me. It's a legitimate issue that I don't think anyone's really giving the time of day to because then you're like, oh, how are you? you're transphobic. No, I'm just wanting to make sure this is a legitimate thing. I don't genuinely care. Be whatever you want to be, but know why you're doing it. Be able to articulate and explain what you think it really is. And I'm like that with any topic, not just your sexual identity. If you're going to believe something, you need to be able to explain to me, as if I know nothing about the subject, what it is you believe and why you believe it. If you cannot do that, then you're ignorant and you need to go back and really evaluate where you stand because if you don't know enough to explain it, you can't have a stance there. You should be able to say words that put what you feel into some type of verbiage. Now, I'm, I'm going to ask a question here because I saw this kind of popping up. Um, you, you mentioned the, the, the humiliation part. Now, what's your view or anybody's uh, view here in chat? You would see pictures or videos of... Uh, Parents making their kids who did something wrong, like steal something, whatever the case may be. And they would send them out and have them hold signs on the side of the roads admitting what they did or, you know, like, hey, you know, I'm such and such. I'm here because I stole something or, you know, I did this or something. Now, what's your views on that? Because you can consider that humiliation, but do you think that's an effective tool for something like that? It's hard to really say. It To me, it depends on both what they did and the history of that particular child. Because if you take someone who's never done anything wrong and then you supremely jump over and overreach and make them say in an intersection with a sandwich board sign over it, like, you know, one of the lethal weapon, one of the diehard movies, it, it, it's like it, that could be severely damaging to that child. But if you have a kid who's had a lot of problems, a lot of acting out, a lot of punishments and nothing's getting through right maybe putting them you know putting them in a space where they have to actually take accountability and take some f feedback right. for lack of a better term from the people around him that he abused and i've seen it myself like one of my friends um he Thank got you very caught. much soap for the follow hey there you go one of my friends got caught going on his bike with a baseball bat and just whacking mailboxes. Mm -hmm. And his dad made him go down the street to every single house that he knocked the mailbox off and apologize. And if necessary, find out how much it was and pay them back for the cost of that mailbox. Mm -hmm. That was public humiliation, but it was also, in my mind, accountability. You did this. You now need to go and see how much this is costing, and you're going to pay it out of a summer job. So... It's really difficult to say that any punishment is 100% acceptable or 100% unacceptable, but it has to be in direct proportion to what they did. So, like, you know, if you commit a crime, you're publicly available on a search database, your arrest record's there, your mugshot's there. That's not cruel and unusual punishment for an adult. So, to be publicly known that you did something as a child, it's not completely out of the question. But you can't. So you just think be... it should fit whatever they did, yes. or the severity of what they did, or how many times they've done the said thing without any. Yeah, like if you steal a candy bar from the store and your parents find out, they'll make you walk the hell back in and give it back and say you're sorry. Absolutely down with that. Yep. They I've shouldn't make that. you stand <laughs> outside the front door with a sign for seven days saying you did it. That's a bit Excessive. too much. But if you went, you know, went down the neighborhood spray painting cars and you got caught. 
and your parents turn you in, you should absolutely be willing to take some feedback for all the cars you were in, all the people who oh, you put yeah. through a lot of hell. So now Gold said, I think it forces shame. People try to use shame to change behavior because it sounds rational. However, trying to change with shame will actually cause that person to build more walls and rebel more because you can't change when you're experiencing shame. Does that make sense? Why well, said I think it also yeah. depends on a child like any other punishment. I wasn't ever punished as a child because I wasn't ever bad. <laughs> okay. Wasn't ever caught. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Ikea said, uh, New Year's, the kids blew up our mailbox. One parent didn't know we allowed them to because we we're going to replace it anyway. One parent sent their kid down to say sorry and help fix it. That's reasonable. Yeah, I mean, especially if they didn't know. But at least you know that they're paying attention to what their kid's doing and all that. Okay, love, you're, you're like a special case, you goody-goody. Get out of here. <laughs> <laughs> Sadly, most kids these days don't know how to, don't care about it. Gold said, shame is demotivating, especially if you have a sensitive child. I could see that. I mean, I could. Uh, I, I feel like if you do have a child who is excessively going out and doing things and constantly having issues, at that point, you may want to seek help as far as determining the reason for the behavior and everything else before you make decisions like that, if you have the means. Um, oh, you're still That's upstairs. That's true. Um, it's true. <laughs> Gary. Um, moving right along, though, in 2014, the APA stated that, quote, childhood psych uh, psychological abuse is as harmful as sexual or physical abuse. Nearly 3 million U.S. children experience some form of psychological maltreatment annually. Psychological maltreatment is, quote, the most challenging and prevalent form of child abuse and neglect. Uh, also, given the prevalence of childhood psychological abuse and the severity of harm to young victims, it should be at the forefront of mental health and social service training. Now, in 2015, additional research confirmed these 2014 statements of the APA. Victims of emotional abuse may react by distancing, some, distancing themselves from the abuser, internalizing the abusive words, or fighting back by insulting the abuser. Emotional abuse can result in abnormal or shit. disrupted attachment development, oh, a tendency for victims to blame themselves, self-blame for the abuse, learned helplessness, and overly passive behavior. Um, so we mentioned, uh, what was it, uh, feeling isolated and some punishments and everything else. Uh, now, how do people feel about grounding? Is it isolation? How do you not yell as a parent? When is the line crossed? So if any of you have any thoughts or uh, anything to add as far as uh, what you feel about those. Um, you know, let us know, and then uh, we'll have a discussion about that as Top figures out what's going on in uh, his household. Sorry about that. I'm back in. <laughs> All right. Did we uh see? Are we on the discussion about the grounding isolation? I already mentioned it. Yeah, I don't. I don't know how grounding falls into this because grounding, I feel, is one of those middle grounds where it's an easier punishment to administer because you're not really harming anyone. And it all depends on your kid. If you have a kid that doesn't go out much, doesn't go to parties, doesn't go out with friends, grounding is really a non, non punishment. But if you got a kid that's always going over places, going to parties, going on field trips, other stuff, grounding can be effective because, okay, you want to do something, but you did this. So sorry, this is off. Uh, I don't think that would be isolation unless you take it to extreme and they never get the chance to do anything because you're right. always, nailing that thing you don't with any punishment you don't want to repeat it too much because a it's probably not working and b for repeating it too much you're probably going overboard on the particular thing and after and a while I that punishment's just not going to mean anything yeah and it's, it's similar with yelling i don't know how as a parent you don't yell I, just no idea i got four kids yelling happens sometimes it's the only way to get them to actually focus look at you go what are you doing are you serious right now and kind of go up a few octaves and get them to actually focus on you. I don't understand how you can not yell as a parent ever. It's just, it's a thing. It's going to happen. I don't think yelling in and of itself is abuse. Like, unless again, you never stop going over. Like the dog never stops barking. <laughs> that is emotional abuse on my on, on me right now. Now, uh, Gold said there is no blanket way to raise a child. I think parents need to know their children better and evaluate if a tactic to, um, to train is working. Uh, which was backed up on my wife who said, like, holding a sign might be a fun punishment for one kid, 
Gold followed up with, like with grounding example, it was effective for my brother, but with my husband, he liked to be grounded because then he could just go play video games. So his mom then changed his, the correction from grounding to no video games, which makes sense. Yeah, that does make sense. That would work. Thankfully, my parents never figured that one out. <laughs> <laughs> I got real good at RPGs. All right. so I like to read, so it worked for me. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Grounding just meant they left me alone. It's mm-hmm. fantastic. All right, so now we come to childhood neglect. Child neglect is the failure of a parent or other person with responsibility for the child to provide needed food, clothing, shelter, and medical care or supervision to the degree that the child's health, safety, or well-being may be threatened with harm. Neglect is also lack of attention from people surrounding a child and the non-provision of the relevant and adequate necessities for the child's survival, which would be a lack of attention, love, and nurturing. Some observable signs of child neglect include uh, if the child is frequently absent from school, begs or steals food or money, lacks needed medical or dental care, is consistently dirty or lacks sufficient clothing for, for the weather, uh, which, fun little tidbit, there's a couple of high schools that have actually turned some old unused offices into laundromats. That way they can come to school and do their laundry. And they've actually upped attendance because a lot of kids are like, yeah, I'm poor, I'm dirty, and I have clothes. Right. And their their self esteem drops to the point where they don't want to come to school, and that has actually helped a lot. So good on schools for doing that. Oh, brought up a good uh, point. If you want to read that real quick, let's see here. I think yelling is absolutely abusive to this day. When anyone raises their voice, it is very traumatic for me because my stepdad would yell all the time. And that's the thing: if you do it all the time, it it can definitely get in there. But there are a lot of instances, especially my daughter. Um, when her birth mother was pregnant with her, she was heavily into meth and she's got some developmental issues. And there's a lot of times where she's doing something. I can see that she's doing it wrong. I'm like, Hey, stop that. Hey, stop that. You need to stop that. And it's like, Hey, and she finally snaps and looks at me. And like, you need to stop what you're doing. And it finally kind of gets her focus, but you shouldn't ever use that as a constant. I'm always yelling because that's, that's never going to end. Let's see here. The 2010 Child Maltreatment Report, uh, NCANDS, that's a, a yearly United States federal government report based on data supplied by CPS agencies in the U.S. states, in prior years, neglect was the most common form of treatment. Neglectful acts usually end up in six categories. You've got supervisory neglect, which is the absence of a parent or guardian, which can lead to physical harm, sexual abuse, or criminal behavior. You have physical neglect characterized by the failure to provide basic physical necessities like a safe and clean home. Medical neglect characterized by a lack of providing medical care. Emotional neglect, which is a lack of nurturance, encouragement, and support. Educational neglect, which is characterized by the caregiver's lack to provide an education and additional resources to actively participate in the school system. And lastly, abandonment with a parent or guardian just leaves the child alone for a long period of time without a babysitter. Now, neglected children may experience delays in physical and uh, psychosocial development, possibly resulting in um, psychopathology and impaired neuropsychology functions, including executive function, attention, processing speed, language, memory, and social skills. Researchers are uh, investigating maltreated children have repeatedly found that neglected children in foster and adoptive populations manifest different emotional and behavioral reactions to regain lost or secure relationships and are frequently reported to have disorganized attachments and a need to control their environment. Such children are not likely to view caregivers as a sor- as being a source of safety and instead typically show an increase in aggressive and hyperactive um, behaviors which may disrupt healthy or secure attachments with their adopted parents. These children have apparently learned to adapt to an abusive and inconsistent caregiver by becoming cautiously self-reliant and are often uh, described as glib, manipulative, and disingenuous in their interactions with others as they move through childhood. Children who are victims of neglect have a more difficult time forming and maintaining relationships, such as a romantic or friendship, later in life due to the lack of attachment they had in their earlier stages of life. Uh, Now... Speaking of, the, of neglect, does anyone here feel the video game uh, parenting neglect? Is it neglect? Are tablets, phones causing voluntary neglect? Basically, uh, I think what that was uh, meaning there um, is basically like... I think you mixed those words up in several different words. Yeah, I did. Uh, basically, uh, letting the TV babysit. Are we letting phones and tablets babysit? Are we letting video games babysit? 
Are we letting these things entertain our children and basically going off and doing shit on our own and leaving them to their own devices, essentially, and just being like, hey, you want to do shit, sit in front of this while I go do this? Yeah, because a lot of parents just want their kids to be quiet, leave them alone, and that, you know, here, watch your movies on your little DVD player, here, play with your phone, here, play with my phone, just be quiet, leave me alone. And the kids enjoy it because they're, they're doing what they want to do, but you're not getting a lot of that parent-child interaction. And, um, you know, my parents were immigrants coming over. I lived with my mom, not my dad. My dad was a hard ass. He knew the stuff he wanted me to learn. My mom was just like, here's a video game. I'm going to watch novellas. Let me know if you need anything. She wasn't really willfully neglecting, but I was pretty much left to whatever the hell I want. My brother was left to do whatever he wanted. We thankfully grew up playing video games, but we absorbed a lot of the good. Mm. ideas morals do the hero the stories of doing good type of stuff and we turned out all right but there's a lot of people that just don't don't get they a lot become of social disconnected don't. exactly i have you to agree there good. she always picks the great so, times doesn't she she does <laughs> but uh, there's something genuine going on that i need to know about so i'll fill you in on after the stream gotcha uh, it's days turned interesting fortunately Whoa. fortunately or unfortunately Unfortunately. Mm. So you're going to be gone shortly after this, aren't you? I don't know. Uh, it just depends. Yeah. No. I'm good. <laughs> <laughs> That's a lie. <laughs> so now we move on. I got to work on my girlish figure. <laughs> So today, abandonment of a child is considered to be a serious crime in many jurisdictions because it can be considered malum in se, wrong in and of itself, due to the direct harm to the child and because the welfare concerns uh, in the, the child becomes a ward of the state and in turn a burden on public uh, fisc. So, for example, the U.S. state of Georgia, is, it's a misdemeanor to willfully and voluntarily abandon a child and a felony to abandon one's child and leave the state. In 1981, Georgia's treatment of abandonment as a felony when the defendant leaves the state was upheld as constitutional by the U.S. Supreme Court. Rehoming is still legal in Arkansas, though, where in 2015, state legislator Justin Harris made national headlines by rehoming two young adopted children. Many jurisdictions have exceptions to the abandonment laws in the form of safe haven laws, which apply to babies left in designated places. Safe haven laws, also known as uh, Baby Moses laws, in reference to the religious scripture one. Moses went floating down a river. Uh, their statutes in the United States decriminalize the leaving of unharmed infants, important distinction there, with, within statutory designated private persons so that child becomes a ward of the state. Safe haven laws typically let parents remain <clears throat> lame in court, often using a bracelet system as the only means of linking the baby to the parent. Some states treat safe haven surrenders as child dependency or abandonment, with a complaint being filed for such in juvenile court, and the parent either defaults or answers the complaint. Others treat safe haven surrenders as adoption surrenders, and they get a waiver of parental rights. Um, police stations, hospitals, and fire stations are typical locations that these laws apply. In Texas, I know libraries also count. Uh, any police, fire, or EMS station, any hospital also counts. Mm -hmm. There's a couple of others that escape me now. That I are think there are even some churches. Places. There's some, yeah, yeah, churches can be designated. And I want to say I've seen the sign at some larger bus stations, like the big terminals where there are buses mm -hmm. and trains and such. But I'm not positive on that. Roger that. Uh, Gold added, childhood abuse can manifest as a pattern of behavior over time, but can also encompass a single severe and traumatic event that undermines a child's sense of self, immediate safety, and long-term security. Yep. Uh, now the effects of abuse. Child abuse can result in immediate adverse physical effects, but it is also strongly associated with developmental problems and with many chronic physical and psychological effects, including subsequent ill health, including higher rates of chronic conditions, high-risk health behaviors, and shortened lifespan. Maltreated children may grow up to be maltreating adults. A 1991 source reported that studies indicate that 90% of maltreating adults were maltreated as children. Uh, child abuse can cause a range of emotional effects as well. Children who are constantly ignored, shamed, terrorized, or humiliated suffer at least as much, if not more, than if they were physically assaulted. According to the Joyful Heart Foundation, brain development of the child is greatly influenced in response to the experiences with families, caregivers, and the community. Abused children can grow up experiencing insecurities, low self-esteem, and lack of development. 
Many abused children experience ongoing difficulties with trust, social withdrawal, trouble in school, and forming relationships. Babies and young children can be affected differently by abuse than their older counterparts. Babies and preschool children who are being emotionally abused or neglected may be overly affectionate towards strangers or people they haven't known for very long. <gasps> Excuse me. They can uh, lack confidence or become anxious, appear to not have a close relationship with their parent, exhibit aggressive behavior, or act nasty towards other children and animals. Older children may use foul language or act in a markedly different way to other children at the same age, struggle to control emotions, strong emotions, seem isolated from their parents, lack social skills, or have few, if any, friends. And Ween comes in with boobs. <laughs> Uh, yeah, that might not have been the best greeting considering tonight's subject, Wee. <laughs> yeah, I think he talked before he looked on that one. <laughs> Hello to you, sir. <laughs> oh, the CA will meet you at the door. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, lordy. All right, did we get to this next section here? Yeah, that's yours. Okay, I didn't catch where you broke. All right, so children can also experience reactive attachment disorder. The in my opinion, unfortunate acronym of RAD. Um, RAD is defined as marked, markedly disturbed and developmentally inappropriate social relatedness, uh, high ween, <laughs> <laughs> that usually begins before the age of five years. RAD can present as persistent failure to start or respond in a developmentally appropriate fashion to most social situations. The... Uh, Long-term impact of emotional abuse has not really been studied widely, but recent studies have begun to document its long-term consequences. Emotional abuse has been linked to increased depression, anxiety, and difficulties in interpersonal relationships. Victims of child abuse and neglect are more likely to commit crimes as juveniles and adults. Domestic violence also takes its toll on children. Although the child is not the one being abused, the child witnesses the domestic violence and is greatly influenced by it as well. Research studies conducted, such as the longitudinal study on the effects of child abuse and children's exposure to domestic violence. I really need to shorten these, by the way. Seriously, I mean, good grief. I have a stroke um, reading that. They show the 36.8% of children engage in felony assault compared to the 47.5% of abuse and assault of children. Um, research has shown that children exposed to domestic violence increase the chance of experience behavioral and emotional problems, <clears throat> depression, ability, anxiety, academic problems, and problems in language development. Overall, the emotional effects caused by child abuse, even witnessing abuse, can result in the long-term and short-term effects that ultimately affect a child's upbringing and development. So, uh, just to get that out of the way, hello, Weem. Hey, Dumbo. I don't think I saw you say anything earlier. If you did, I apologize, but hi. We know you're there. Yeah. When Mirror's here, Dumbo's here, and vice versa. Uh, moving on, speaking of physical giggity, uh, oh, <laughs> bad boy. timing. I know. The immediate <laughs> physical effects of abuse or neglect can be relatively minor, bruises or cuts or severe uh, such as broken bones, hemorrhage, or even death. In some cases, the physical effects are temporary. However, <clears throat> the pain and suffering they cause a child should not be discounted. Rib fractures may be seen with physical abuse, and at present may increase suspicion of abuse, but are found in a small minority of children with maltreated, maltreatment-related injuries. The long-term impact of child abuse and neglect on physical health and development can be shaken baby syndrome, Shaking a baby is a common form of child abuse that often results in permanent neurological damage, 80% of cases, or death, 30% of cases. Damage results from intracranial hypertension, increased pressure in the skull after bleeding in the brain, uh, damage to the spinal cord and neck, and rib or bone fractures. Another one is impaired brain development. Child abuse and neglect have been shown in some cases to cause important regions of the brain to fail to form or grow properly, resulting in impaired development. These uh, alterations in brain maturation uh, have long-term consequences for cognitive language and uh, academic abilities. Uh, let's see what's going on here. Uh, don't shake the baby. Put them in their crib and go for a walk. And yes, Ikea, that percentage does add up to 110, but that's because in 10% of the cases where there was neurological damage, it later resulted in death. Math. Yeah. <laughs> um, poor physical health. In addition to possible immediate adverse physical effects, household dysfunction and childhood maltreatment are strongly associated with many chronic physical and psychological effects, including subsequent ill health in childhood, 
adolescence and adulthood with higher rates of chronic conditions, high risk health behaviors and shortened lifespan. Like we mentioned earlier, adults who experience abuse or neglect during childhood are more likely to suffer from physical ailments such as allergies, arthritis, asthma, bronchitis, high blood pressure and ulcers. Uh, mind you, a lot of these are very much related to stress as well. So if they're going through a very high stress environment, things like high blood pressure, ulcers, you know, definitely if uh, there's any type of um, abuse or if they can constantly breaking things or bruised up or anything, it can cause arthritis and joints. Uh, it's pretty crazy. Uh, there this may next be, one was actually pretty interesting. Uh, there may be a higher risk of developing cancer later in life as well as possible immune dysfunction as well because remember um, – depending on the type of uh, abuse, your uh, immune system isn't quite developed. So if the development of that isn't quite up to par where it needs to be, that can cause issues too. Now, the next one, uh, he jumped ahead to. <laughs> uh, exposure. <laughs> what I was saying, the, the high risk of cancer is actually pretty interesting. Yes. I didn't realize that, that mental abuse would really go that far. Can you Can you imagine a kid who is unfortunately – a part of an anti-vax household who's also being abused. Oh, I mean, they're screwed. I didn't even think that that would even make it worse, but yeah. Yeah. Uh, Gold said, this goes with what you guys are saying with parents with mental health issues. Uh, we'll pass those down to their kids. Untreated mental health issues, yes. Good example with me and loud noises because of my childhood sends me into panic attack and act in ways to stop that excessive noise. Not saying I would shake a baby, but I unfortunately understand how one could get there. So this explains why she gets so quiet when we're yelling in Ring of Elysium. Could be. Things yeah. go from zero to, oh, my fucking God, real quick. Yeah, yeah. Um, exposure to violence during childhood is associated with shortened uh, telomeres and with reduced telom uh, telomerase activity. Uh, the increased rate of telomere length reduction correlates to a reduction in lifespan of 7 to 15 years. So violence... Yeah. I think I probably should have added this to the definitions, but I felt like it would confuse people. I don't know if a lot of people understand what telomeres are, but telomeres are typically the cells that are in charge of regeneration and growing new cells and, and activity continuing on. Um, our body is constantly while, doing that. Right. The, the reason people die is because cell growth slows to the point where we're going to start failing and right. end up dying around the 80s and 90s range. Um, lobsters, little known fact, they never stop their telomere growth never ceases. Lobsters are technically immortal. Uh, it, it would not die of old age in and of itself. It would grow to be too large and would starve to death because it could not consume enough calories to continue its growth rate, but it would mm. not die of age, so to speak. And um, the fact that abuse can shorten telomere growth and telomere's activity is really kind of terrifying mm -hmm. because that puts more of a mental link with your mortality like if you are positive enough perhaps you could extend that and actually live happy longer. life extended life <laughs> uh well, i said mindfulness yoga meditation has been shown to increase telomere length yeah so there well, you very go interesting there as well basically the happier you are in life you can kind of extend so don't stress people out looking at you <laughs> <laughs> i'm gonna die by the time i'm 50 um, this podcast keeps us up. I know, right? Uh, data from a recent study supports previous findings that specific neurobiochemical changes are linked to exposure to violence and abuse. Uh, several biological pathways can possibly lead to the development of illness, and certain psychological mechanisms can moderate how severe illness has become in patients with past experience with violence or abuse. That's another crazy one. It, it, it's our mental health, like directly correlates to our physical health a lot. Yeah, exactly. So that's why anytime you deal with someone with depression or anxiety or anything else like that, uh, pain and oh, gold is hosting me. Thank you. Um, you know, you'll notice a lot of times those people always feel like they're in pain. They always feel, you know, have issues. Something is always going on because a lot of that is linked to physical as well. Uh, recent studies have also given evidence of a link between stress, as I mentioned earlier, occurring in early life and uh, epigenetic modifications that last into adulthood. Indeed. And now we come into more of the psychological aspects of abuse effects. So children who have a history of neglect or physical abuse are at risk of developing psychiatric problems or a disorganized attachment style. In addition, children who experience child abuse or neglect are 59% more likely to be arrested as juveniles, 
28% more likely to be arrested as adults, and 30% more likely to commit violent crime. Disorganized attachment is associated with a number of developmental problems, including disassociative symptoms, anxiety, depressive, acting out symptoms. A study by Dante Cachetti found that 80% of abused and maltreated infants exhibited symptoms of disorganized attachment. When some of these children became parents, especially if they suffered from post-traumatic stress disorder, disorder, excuse me, disassociative symptoms or other sequelae of child abuse, they may encounter difficulty when faced with their infant and young children's needs and distress, which may in turn lead to adverse consequences for their child's social and emotional development. And additionally, the child, children may find it difficult to feel empathy towards themselves or others, which may cause them to feel alone and unable to make friends. Despite these potential difficulties, psychosocial intervention can be effective, at least in some cases, in changing the ways maltreated parents think about their children. Let's see what this ping was here real quick. Uh, we could, up to you. I don't think there's enough left for a separate. There's quite a bit uh, left if you scroll down. Yeah, we're kind of at about the halfway point, yeah. so I guess let's break it at... Let's see, where where was I? You left off here where my cursor is. No, I didn't get to the end. I think it was up here. Oh, okay. Let's see. Let's put it at right here. Let's just break this. So additionally, children may find it difficult to feel empathy towards himself. For, oh, no. I didn't get past that. Mm -hmm. uh, let's see here <laughs> oh I think I've ended that paragraph and I stopped right here okay so we can stop it here if, uh, yeah because we have gone on quite a bit what time is it yeah, almost 5 o'clock yeah. and uh, I do have a few things to clarify some stuff has happened over here that I need to definitely find out more about so yes so what we're going to do right two. now is because we still have quite a bit going on and we don't want to ramble on too much because i have found that unfortunately if you keep rambling on about a topic a lot of people start losing interest and it just kind of drones uh so we want to avoid that so what we are going to do is we're going to break this up into a two-part segment so we'll continue the rest of this uh next sunday 3 30 p.m central same as always um so i want to thank everybody for joining us um and don't forget to check the discord server uh, there will be a vote for the next topic uh, going up here shortly. Uh, also, please comment on any topics you may wish to see in the future, but don't appear in the poll yet. We do love getting input from you. We also appreciate all of you just showing up uh, to be a part of this discussion, giving us your feedback, your input. Especially on Easter Sunday, because we know Absolutely. Uh, I, I think, honestly, this is a good time. I mean, this is a good time. You're dealing with family. You may be around family members, uh, so this may be will help you uh, realize, you know, more of what's going on and what to look out for, especially as more people are spending time with family they may not have seen in a while or anything else like that. Always look out. Remember, uh, we got to look out for each other. Um, so with that in mind, again, thank you so much. We will be continuing this uh, next weekend, Sunday, 3.30 p.m. Central. This has been What Do You Know? I'll have a great night and enjoy the rest of your Sunday and your Easter should you celebrate. Say goodnight, Top. Good night, Top.